What's up, everybody? I'm back. Though it's been a while since I had the nice tutorial here, but here comes the next tutorial. So I'm skipping ahead a little bit. Skipping way ahead, to be honest, to this tutorial series. A popular demand. People have been asking about Short Circuit 2. I've done many videos showing you guys how to use Short Circuit for sampling. Short story to give you guys a little background on the Short Circuit. That was done by a company called Venber Audio. So kind of a very uh, older, archaic program. They did release Short Circuit 2. Uh, however, the product of Short Circuit 2 wasn't finished. Short Circuit 1, due to age and due to the company, no longer... Uh, well, they're, they're, they're kind of open, is how I would say this. They're not necessarily completely gone. They're, they're kind of still around. But not really still around so because of that you can't really get short circuit anymore but you can still get free copies of short circuit too when you find those you'll notice there's some pretty big differences there and also short circuit to it seems to be a little bit unfinished but due to them giving it out for free we can't really complain about that too much to keep it real so today's video this is going to be all about short circuit 2 and how to get that thing going without further ado Let's get into it. The power is back. All right, so if you notice, this is not LMMS program we're usually in. There's a program called Wavosaur. The first step for using Short Circuit 2 the way that I use it on this channel is that you have to get another program to get your sample split and sliced. The reason why, once we get into it, you'll see what I mean. In Short Circuit 2, unlike Short Circuit 1, there is no built-in sample slicing function. So that means you have to use a different program to do that. Wavasaur is my program of choice. It is very simple and straightforward to do it, and you can still download Wavisaur for free. So I recommend you download this program. I put a link in the description where you can find it. So what we need to do is, we need to put in some markers on this wave file. So to back up a bit, it has to be a wave file for it to work in short circuit one or two. That's just a, a, a software thing. I think short circuit to a byte support so different types, but just make sure that you save things as a wave file for it. It's the best to just go ahead and use the wave. So what you gotta do here in Wave Store, you have to add markers at the points that you would like the sample to begin. So all these green lines you see here, like any good cooking show, I went and sliced this up ahead of time so you guys don't have to watch me do all that finding little places to slice it. Basically what you do is you go in, you fish around to hear find where you like how it sounds. Play the little weird sample here. So when you find this spot right here, you see where there's a blue line, that's the playhead. Where that is, you right click on it and just simply hit create marker. And once you do that, You'll see it adds one of these green lines. I'll go to the end and add one so you can see what it looks like. So right here, if I go right right click, create marker, it should have put a green line there. I think the song is done at that point, the reason it didn't do it. There it goes. Do you see there's a green line there now? I'm gonna hit it undo a couple times. I don't want it to put too many markers in there. But that's all that there is to it. So now once you've gone in, you gotta kinda of fish around find where you wanted to start playing a sample so you would go here put this marker right before like where a drum head is or where some vocal sample that you ought to do is now you have to save you just simply could go in and hit save it's as simple as that that's all you have to do and then this will just simply save this same wave file everything will be the same it'll just have these markers embedded now Let's go to the next step that you have to do, how to actually load files in, because that's a little complicated and confusing. So I'm going to make sure I simplify that for you guys. Okay, so you guys got to go to your file explorer 
and you have to find where you've installed short circuit to whichever folder you've installed it to you should have a folder that says short circuit to so you have to pay attention when you're installing it what folder that you installed it in I can't really tell you that because that's going to depend on how you guys did the installation. So you just have to be mindful of that when you're installing it. What folder you installed it to. For me, it's just a folder that I made called Plugins. That's where it's saved for me. So then once you find your folder short circuit to, you'll come in. Within this folder, there's a folder called Database. Click on that. Within this folder, there's another folder called Samples. Click on that. As you can see, I've already put some of my folders in. What you have to do here, the folder that you save your samples in, so the songs that you would like to sample, whatever folder that they're saved in, you have to go in, right click, and then paste the shortcut. So to demonstrate that real quick, I'm going to go in here to the folder 808 state where that was saved at, have that copied go over here and hit paste shortcut that's what's important you don't want to paste the whole folder you just want to paste a shortcut to it and now let's go to the next step actually loading up short circuit 2 in LMMS so what you want to do is for those of you who haven't seen this before when you're opening up a VST plugin in here you gotta bring it in in Vestige. So you drag your Vestige to a new track here. I do mine in the Beat Baseline Editor, but just to show you, you can just put it right there in your Edit Window too. Check out my first tutorial if you don't know the difference between the Beat Baseline and the Editor Window. So you open up Vestige. Go in. If you have it set up right, it should go right to your folder where you save all of your uh, VST plugins at. So there just navigate to your short circuit 2 folder open up the short circuit 2 dot dll file and then now we're in over here every time that you add in a new folder right click and hit refresh database and then it'll have everything up to date and then every time now go into the folder that you just did so you see all the WAV files that are in that folder that I pasted that shortcut to, they show up down here. So this right here was the song that we went in and WAV is sorry, put the markers on and hit save. So this is saved the WAV file. So now this WAV file has markers on it. So you click on it, drag it over to the keyboard, put it on the note that you'd like it to start on. Now since you, this has markers, you see that those green lines from Wavisor, they pop up here as orange lines. You can actually go in here and adjust them a little bit. So if you need to, you can go in, click on these and slide them around a little bit. So you can do what you, whatever you need to do with that. You know, if you need to clean things up, you can, that's an option. So it basically just depends what you need to do. Now, what you have to do also, notice how this is just on this key right here, the C. It says this is slice. We need a little bit more keys than just one. So you can actually drag this up. And this will let it cover however many keys it is that you have on there. So as I was mentioning, you have to just play with it to line this up. So that C2 is actually really equal to a MIDI note of C4. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. Later on... For uh, people who are really new in, in the different, when I go back to more of the basics of how to use LMMS, I'll cover MIDI a little bit deeper. But that's basically what you have to do, just line that up so that it, it matches the keys here. But I'm not going to really do a whole lot more explaining the sampling just because I've done this to death on other uh, Short Circuit 1 videos. From here, it's essentially the same. It's just a little bit different with getting it set up. All right, so I made an instrumental already off of this. So kind of a couple of points that I was going to make on this. If you do happen to have the copy for Short Circuit 1 still, definitely don't delete it since you can't get it because it is the superior tool for sampling. And also it could just be related to my own personal setup. 
but short circuit to it really is it seems to bog down my computer a lot harder than short circuit one did so I, I like I said that might be related to my setup you guys might not have that issue but I noticed that so, but it is the doable you can't find a copy of short circuit one anywhere on the internet short circuit two it is doable you can do many of the same things there's some things that are improved and also if you put them side by side short circuit two is probably a little bit prettier than short circuit one it's just to open that up real quick some people are going to prefer short circuit two's display to short circuit one because it looks kind of like a spreadsheet whereas short circuit two is a lot more prettier of an interface short circuit two is definitely the, the it looks a lot more modern and up to date so to be I don't really care about the looks it's more about the speed and the familiarity that I have with it the same reason why I still use LMMS after all these years even though I own other programs on here just the speed and familiarity of it so going in here actually making a beat on here is, is unchanged from my other video so the, the same principles with how to slice it up and everything is the same the only main difference like I showed you, you got to go with Wavis or, or a program similar to that and add in markers but you can move these markers around like I showed you after the fact if you need to clean things up a quick note that I learned with um, making the markers and Wavisor for you guys to look out for the markers and Wavisor they were numbered so just make sure that you're mindful of that as the, as you move from left to right on the timeline make sure the numbers of the markers are always getting higher because if they're not that can mess up certain keys not playing like for me D on the sample it, it doesn't play on here because it it wasn't lined up right it just gives you that low click reason why is because this sample begins before this one in the timeline that was probably made zero sense to most of you guys but for those of you who that did make some sense for I hope that is a helpful tip but that's something that I noticed as a quirk there is still filters in here like there was on the old one so where things have moved around up here for your slicing it once you make your markers and wave a sword you don't have to change that it automatically comes up as sliced key map so you don't have to worry about that it still has different modes just like the first one that's how you change it and it still has the uh, ability to tune it same thing so you can turn it up semitones turn it down to semitone down here the MIDI ranges because they have a more prettier setup it visually shows you that over here where you drag the sample to this little keyboard window so you don't have to do as much with this you can but you don't have to down here same thing this is where the pitch controls have moved to now and you can add filters to it as well you know there's little oscillators because this one actually does have the ability to generate some of its own numbers so, as well I'll play you the little beat that I made to play us out if you guys have any extra questions or comments about short circuit 2 definitely hit me up in the comment section below you guys made it this far I appreciate you guys for watching and make sure you subscribe for some more tutorials coming up soon alright guys thanks for tuning in